You know, one of the things I'm looking at, sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you, is the campaign itself. Mm -hmm. You've talked about how, you know, um, Minister to all also carried the Bring Back Our Girls, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> hashtag. I have to, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help myself <laughs> with a chuckle there. But the thing is, you know, a host of people are saying that it was seen that we're directing all this pressure on the federal government mm -hmm. and we're not really standing up to say no to terrorism because it is the terrorists that should get the message that this is actually an attack on us. Mm -hmm. And we should actually be on the side of our government on this, you know, with a statement to the terrorists. What do you have to say about that? The terrorist has no obligation to me as a, as a citizen of Nigeria. I, I agreed, yeah. but they're attacking our, you know, our, our integrity. Our, I, shed. I would rather focus on someone who has power to stop the terrorists. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm -hmm. The terrorist neither does he have any obligation to answer me or respect what I have to say. Mm -hmm. But my federal government does have that obligation because the Constitution makes that their mandate. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, as a citizen, can put pressure. Yes, end terrorism, end Boko Haram, death to terror, death to whatever. I can say all that, I can shout all that for all I care. Mm -hmm. But the point where I feel I can have an influence is to force my government to realize that this is a problem that is of concern to me. But do you not think that we should also be sending a message out to the terrorists in terms of the fact that we're solidly behind our government on this particular note? I would say yes, indirectly. So we're solidly behind our government to do the right thing. Now when our government is not doing the right thing, then the pressure is on them that you need to act. The citizens are behind you to act. And I think that's the message we're trying to say. Which is as essentially yeah. where I think the minister came in with her. You know, I'm not, I'm not making excuses mm -hmm. for her, but you know, one would think that at the end of the day, this is actually more a message down to the terrorists. Because if you're seeing the First Lady of America mm -hmm. carrying a placard, I don't think that she's directly talking to the Nigerian government. I want to also believe that there's a message against the terrorists. Because as much as they're carrying that, they're also saying we're offering support mm -hmm. for our girls to come, to come back. back. At the end of the day, they become girls of the world, not mm -hmm. just girls of Nigeria. And, and I think that, you know, maybe essentially what we're saying is also sending a message to the terrorists. Maybe. But I think just so that we, we sort of don't dilute the message. The message in terms of the campaign really is targeted primarily at the federal government because they are the ones that have agency to bring back our girls. The Boko Haram has agency to release our girls but in terms of bringing them back is to you actually have to do an action to go and get them and bring them back. So I think just so that we're clear and not, I, I understand what you're saying quite frankly in terms of um, we're all in this global support, whatever any agency has to do to do, but really just to make it clear because it, it, for us it almost cheapens it when a government agency is speaking to itself, I'm going to, I mean, it's just like it's speaking to itself and saying, bring back our girls. So who, are you ask, who are you asking to do that? So, but it is a fair point that, yes, there is a message to terrorists as well. But as a citizen, our focus is really to get our government to act. And we're solidly behind them. Are, we saying, are we saying that message loud enough? Because, I mean, in recent times, too, I also managed to read a couple of messages from the APC, mm -hmm. the op opposition party. And they've also sent out a pretty strong message in saying that, it is our, you know, unity that is at stake here, and this is what the terrorists are planning to do. And as much as possible, we need to loop together. Do you also see citizens bridging that gap between people and government, as we've seen, you know, coming together yeah. on one side to say, look, we jointly are against you on this one, the terrorists. It's hard, Mark. But quite honestly, when you see footage like yesterday's. So it's hard to be behind your government and saying we're on the side of government against Syria when your government is against you. So it then leaves citizens in a very precarious position. So yes, we want that we are behind our men in the field who continue to work hard under very difficult circumstances. We want them to succeed because at the end of the day, we need them to work to bring the girls back. But saying that we're solidly behind the government and making that the, the singular story in a sense it becomes very dangerous when your government can turn against you at any point in time. So I think that's really the challenge, where the focus has to really stick around citizens' pressure to government. Yeah, we are behind you, but we will push you to do the right thing. Do you believe that our military men can bring these girls back? I believe they can, if they are um, properly equipped to do so, both sort of um, in terms of resources, emotionally, psychologically, and with the right intelligence that they need. Do you think that we are providing that? I think as there are challenges a, as a people in the government. I think there are challenges. I mean, I don't have, um, I have, I won't say that I've read documents or can say I've seen internal documents, but after a while when things repeat themselves over and over and over and over again from different sources, you begin to wonder if there are fundamental challenges. Huge budgetary allocations, but people complain about equipment that don't work or lack of equipment, or they're not fully, um, properly, for, uh, properly equipped to do this work. You hear uh, stories of decisions. So you hear all these stories, and then you begin to wonder, okay, what exactly are the challenges? Um, then, I mean, what we just discussed earlier, the community says there's no military presence. 
you have an operation in the community of an eight hour period and no security agency shows up. Then you begin to wonder what, what exactly is going on? What exactly is the story? And again, uh, are we speaking about this, uh, sorry, Mark, but because uh, you know, all of a sudden, almost everyone in government is talking on this matter, mm -hmm. and it's just 28 days. It's not as if it just happened. Yep. Uh, why the silence before now? And I think that also goes back to my first point about it. we're being behind government. Government has made it very difficult to be behind them. This happened on a Monday the 14th. By the following Monday, a week after, we had crowdsourced, um, uh, 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 there was a citizen effort online, crowdsourced citizens' response to terror. Ten points. Citizens were warned from respect of human life, empowering local governments to take more action, what is going on with our, our budgeting, um, proving social welfare. I mean, ten different points that citizens came up with that, look, we need to focus on these things. And citizens are willing to work with you. A national emergency number, which you guys have spoken on this show severally about. Nothing. So it's not that citizens, in that sense, this was sort of citizens saying, okay, you know what, this is an issue. So, and the hashtag online was citizens solutions to end terrorism. So that was citizens coming forth with our ideas. But nothing. Suddenly, we get, begin to get a bit of international buzz. People start talking about it. Local media is talking about it. And then World Economic Forum is around the corner. And then it almost becomes imperative for our government to start talking about so it. So people talking about it from outside actually was the push? Most definitely. I think we, I mean, internally we started talking, but outside noise and outside pressure then made it. I mean, these are people who are coming. Okay, so you're inviting the world to come to talk about your economy, yet you have the most disadvantaged sector of the economy, women and girls who are missing. We haven't spoken about them. We're not looking for them. We're not. And then people begin to wonder, there's some disconnect in this narrative. An economy is run by human beings, not aliens or robots. So, so we need to focus on our human beings. So how soon are we likely to get this? over with? I hope very soon. It's going to be a month on Wednesday. Um, yeah, as you, as, mm -hmm. as you alluded to. It's 28 to, days today. 28 days today. So it'll be a month on Wednesday. Um, the hope is that it is very soon. But I think beyond even just getting, what would, what would um, give a better time frame is to see concrete actions by government. Feedback, information, briefings, actual steps. Can someone, if someone can go to Chibok and actually say they see, they see military presence, then you know something has changed. But if 28 days we're still talking about very sparse military presence, people are still pointing fingers, then it really does make you worry that are we really treating this with the gravity that it deserves? Well, I'd like to thank you so very much for finding time to join us, uh, Yemi Adamuleko, activist, and uh, well, executive director, enough is enough. Well, people should speak up, she says, and uh, well, the military high command and uh, even the government, uh, governments of Baruno and the federal government should also give adequate briefing to the people.